Okay, now let's talk about wave packets. Um, we've already sort of have just sort of a, a look at a wave packet, which um, a schematically, uh, which is sort of a modulation in a um, in a sort of harmonic wave, uh, and that modulation sort of is can be represented by an envelope, which modulates the amplitude of the wave. And the way that you create such a wave packet is that you uh, superpose uh, several uh, sinusoidally varying or harmonic waves of different frequency and potentially of different amplitude, although we're going to consider the simplest case right now uh, of just two waves uh, that have the same amplitude, y sub zero, okay, uh, but different uh, different frequencies and therefore different um, uh, wave numbers which uh, which is uh, obviously related to the wavelength okay so we have the superposition wave okay and um, if we uh, uh, try to figure out how the amplitude of that uh, of this wave varies in time, okay, or in space. Uh, it's a superposition so of two different waves with different frequencies, and so they're gonna. Uh, uh, sometimes they'll be in phase, sometimes they'll be out of phase, and so the amplitude of the total of the sum is going to be modulated. And one way that we can figure that out is that we can um, we can consider the case where we freeze time at t equals zero, and we look at the spatial variation. Okay, so uh, if we, in this case, if we assume that the difference in the wave numbers between the two waves, k1 minus k2, is much, much less than the average wave number, or uh, equivalently, that the um, difference in the two wavelengths of the two waves is much, much less than the average of the two wavelengths. So that means that the, um, that the, uh, the waves don't differ that much in frequency or wavelength. And we're going to we're going to represent uh, the the absolute value of lambda two minus lambda one as uh, delta lambda, and lambda one plus lambda two divided by two is delta bar, a de lambda bar. Okay, so that's the average wavelength. So if we um, if we assume that this is true, and we basically frozen time, then what we um, what we can understand is that at small values of x, okay. Again, we're looking now at just the spatial variations. We've frozen time. So for small values of x, the two waves, um, if we assume that they're in phase at x equals 0, say, then for small values of x, the two waves are remain in phase. But gradually, they come out of phase uh, because they have different wavelengths, different frequencies. And at some distance, delta x, equal to some number times the average wavelength, um, the wave the waves will be out of phase by pi, and they'll destructively interfere. Okay. Um, the condition for this destructive interference actually is that the is that this that this particular number of wavelengths, average wavelengths, um, times the difference in the two wavelengths. Okay, is equal to some um, is some uh, is equal to a multiple but um, of uh, the average wavelength divided by two. So in other words, when the two waves have have um, uh, when the when the two waves uh, are out of phase by half of the average wavelength, then you'll get destructive interference. Okay, and so we basically have this relationship, and this is the relationship that we that we wrote on the on the previous view graph, and so if we then just um, uh, uh, you uh, put these two together, then you get that delta x is equal to lambda bar squared, the average wavelength squared, divided by two times lambda. Okay, and if we plug in for that k is equal to two pi over lambda, then delta k is equal to two pi over lambda squared delta lambda. We get this relationship, and eventually we can get that delta x delta k is equal to pi.